Question 7. Uh, the perimeter of a triangle is 90 centimetres. The lengths of the sides of the triangle are in the ratios uh, 3 to 5 to 7. Work out the length of the longest side, the longest side of the triangle. So that's obviously going to be this one, isn't it? Now, ratio. 95% of the time, uh, ratio questions are usually about finding out what one part is. One part. We've got three parts, five parts, and seven parts. Okay, that makes up uh, a total of 15 parts. So we've got a total of 15 parts. Okay, and that 15 parts equals altogether 90 centimeters. Remember, this is perimeter, so we're talking about them all added up together, all the lengths added up together. Um, okay, so we need to find out what one part is. Well, then in that case, one part. Uh, you know, you could think of it like, you know, as a ratio, you can think of it like this. So we're dividing that by 15 to get 1, aren't we? 15 divided by 15 is 1. So we have to do the same here, divide by 15. Okay, and we get 6, so 6 centimetres. Okay, so one part is 6 centimetres. So from then on, we just have to work out what 7 parts is. 6 times 7, which is 42 centimeters okay and you've got three marks for that one okay this is a set question um, we've got a universal set the universal set is all the whole numbers between 2 and 12 inclusive a is the set of odd numbers which means all the odd numbers in here and P is the set of prime numbers prime numbers that are in, in, in that range. So the first thing I would do is list them up, list all the odd numbers. So the odd numbers in this case are uh, 3, start with 3, 5, uh, 7, 9 and 11. Um, the prime numbers are, well in here, let's just re remember what a prime number is. It only has two factors, one and itself. Two is the only even prime number. Um, so we can put two and we can cross off all the other even numbers. Uh, then we've got three, that's prime. It only has two factors, one and three. And five, same again. And seven. Uh, is nine prime? No, because 3 goes into 9, doesn't it, as well as 1 and 9. So that isn't prime, but 11 is. So there we go. And the question is, is list the members of the set A intersected with P. So that's, you know, if you've got a Venn diagram, we're talking about, we're talking about this bit here, aren't we? This is A and this is P. Okay, and where do these sets intersect? So we've got we've got well threes in both, isn't it? So three must be in there. Okay. Five is in both. Seven is in both. And eleven is in both. Okay. A union P means everything in A and P all together. So everything that's in A and everything that's in P but without duplication. Okay, so if, if you look at, we've got um, we've got two threes there, but we won't put two threes down. We just put one. Okay, so we've got we've got two, three, five, seven, nine, and eleven. Okay. Now then, question eight is a compound interest problem. Um, Compound interest is very simple if you look at it, uh, um, if we remember about our uh, uh, converting de uh, percentages into decimals, but uh, let, let's, let's, um, let's make a start. So she's investing $8,000 for three years at 5% interest, and that's per annum, that means per year, every year. Okay, now the way compound interest works is that 
um, the interest builds up. So if I invested £100 at 5% interest, after the first year, uh, I would have made 5%, which is £5. So I would then add that on to the £100, and I would have £105. Okay. Now, the next year, when I was calculating the interest, and it's still 5%, then... Um, I would work out what 5% of the new balance is. In other words, what 5% of 105 is. And then I would add that on. And, that, and so it carries on. So it accumulates. So for this one, um, we've got £8,000 starting with 8000 After the first year, we would add 5%. Okay. Well, one really easy way with your calculator of adding 5% onto anything is to times it by 1.05. Yes? Uh, if you add 5% onto something, um, you start with 100%, you're going to end up with 105%. 105% as a decimal is 1.05. So if I multiply something by 1.05, that's the same as adding 5%. Okay. So I do that and I come up with a with a, a new balance. But I'm not going to work that out. I'm going to think of what happens now after the second year. After the second year, we will take this new balance here and we will times it by 1.05 again, won't we? And then after the third year, we will do it again. Okay, so we've got 8,000 times 1.05, times 1.05, times 1.05. Now, there's an easy way of writing that, which is 8,000 times, you've got something here, times itself three times, so that's cubing, isn't it? 1.05 cubed. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got the original amount, okay, this is the number of years, and this is the um, percentage change. Okay, so uh, so this is we can use this to work out any any um, compound interest problem, um, and in this case, if we do that sum, um, you actually get. 9,261 dollars. 9,261 dollars. Uh, which is pretty good if you ask me. That, that, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. 